network games over network. And uh, we'll talk about wardrobe equilibrium, which is uh, uh, a notion of Nash equilibrium for games over network. So the idea is as follows. You are looking at the traffic flow within a city. Okay. So remember you have talked about, you might have studied this shortest path problem. So you have a network, let's say, and you have edges. And you want to go from this point to this point, right? So, and each of this edge could have cost, right? And your goal is to figure out what is the path with the least cost, okay? So in this case, this path has the least cost, and this path also turns out to have the least cost, okay? So you can pick one of these two paths, and you can reach your destination. So this is your source. This is your destination. Now, so that's that's easy. That's easy to understand. This is shortest path problem. You apply dynamic programming. You find the shortest path to go from S to D. Now, assume that there are people at every node, and they want to go to some other node. Okay. So someone from here wants to go to this node. Someone from here wants to go to this node, and so on. And what happens in that case is, if you have a large number of people at every node and they want to go to some other node, then there is each of these link also has some sort of, I don't want to say capacity because that's a separate problem. Uh, but let's say the amount, the cost of this link actually depends on the amount of traffic that is going through this link. Okay, so if traffic is small, the cost is small. If the traffic is high, the cost is high. So this kind of thing happens, for instance, in road network or in communication network. So if you have packets that have to move from this source to this destination, you can actually route it through this uh, sequence of routers, or you can route it through these sequence of routers. And depending upon what the traffic is along each of these communication channels, you will get different delays or different performance along those links, okay? So the cost depends on the traffic that's going through the link. So the question is if all these, all these agents are strategic, which is the case in traffic network, you know, when I leave my house, I want to take the best possible path to the destination. And sometimes it's better to go through a highway, sometimes it's better to go through a city road, depending upon how the traffic is at that time of the day. So I want to minimize my cost from going from source to destination, so I'll pick a, pick a route which works the best for me, and so everyone is going to pick a route that works the best for him or herself. So what's the equilibrium of this big game? Okay, this big game over the, this network. So. In this case, so to begin with, the players are source, destination, source, destination pairs, okay? And the actions are path from source to destination. And then the, the cost is, or the loss function here is paths lead to flow, flow leads to uh, congestion, and the congestion leads to cost. Or you could have congestion or you could also have delay. And both these will contribute to your cost. So we start with a very basic example, uh, which is called as big O network. 
comes from 1920. So I have a source and a destination and I have two paths. Okay, the simplest network you can potentially think of. And in, along this link, the loss function is identity matrix. Along this link, the loss function is one. Okay, this is my source and this is my destination. And we are going to focus on uh, non-atomic, non-atomic players. Okay, what do I mean by non-atomic players? So one player, by switching its action, cannot affect the flow over the network. Okay, so each player is non-atomic. And auto so what is an atom? Well, atom is an individual. Okay, so non-atomic means there is no individual. It's all in terms of rate. Uh, so an individual communicate, an individual packet of data doesn't affect the delay in the communication network. It's the whole traffic that affects the delay in the network. So let's assume that one unit of traffic is entering the network, and of course one unit has to come out of the destination eventually. And it's a static model. There is no dynamics involved in it. So the question is, there are two questions to ask. One is, what is the optimal way of routing the traffic? Let's say there is some god who will direct each and every individual coming at this node to either take this link or that link, okay? And that god is going to make everything optimal. So there are two questions to ask. One is the optimal cost, and the other is uh, the, strate the Nash equilibrium cost. Okay, so let's try and compute the optimal cost. So what's the total cost? So total cost, let's say x1 traffic flows in the first link and x2 is the amount of traffic flowing through the second link. So the total cost is summation xi li of x, i equals 1 to 2, okay? So each individual is having a loss of L1 of x, and that is multiplied by the number of individuals, which in this case should be thought of as fraction of the total number of individuals, okay? So xi multiplied by li of x, and the constraint is, well, x1 plus x2 has to be equal to 1, x1 greater than equal to 0, x2 greater than equal to 0. Okay. So what's the optimal cost? So let's do the optimal cost computation. So I have so let's, uh, let's get rid of these two constraints, I don't care. So let's remove these constraints for the time being. And what I have is x1, multi x1 square plus 1 into x2, and that's equal to, so I want to minimize the total cost. So minimize with respect to x1 and x2. So that's equal to x1 squared plus 1 minus x1. I want to minimize with respect to x1. What does that give me? x1 star equals to 1 half, and that implies x2 star equals to 1 half, and so that meets these two constraints, so we are good. Okay, that's the answer. This is the optimal flow. And this is the optimal flow, so what's the optimal cost? So cost is equal to half multiplied by half plus half multiplied by one, so that gives me three over four. So that's the optimal cost.
Okay, so if we have an invisible hand that is going to direct the traffic optimally, this is the total cost that the society will incur uh, for moving one uh, one unit of traffic from source to the destination in this PIGO network. Now let's assume that people are going to be strategic, okay, and they will pick the route that minimizes their own time, their own cost. So what's the uh, what is going to be the uh, dominant strategy? So if I if if I'm an individual and I'm standing here and I'm a non-atomic player, so I don't affect the traffic of the network whatsoever or the delay in the network whatsoever alone. If I'm standing here and I need to go here, if I look at this link, I'm going to incur a cost of one no matter what. But if I go at, along this link, I'm going to incur a cost of x1, which is less than or equal to one, okay? So this is a weakly dominant strategy for me. And so I will always take the top link, okay? Does that make sense? So x1 or link taking uh, the path one is weakly dominant since x1 is less than equal to 1. What would this imply? x2, so for, for so every individual will do this calculation and will realize that that individual needs to go through the first path, which means x2 will be equal to 0 at, along the Nash equilibrium and x1 along the Nash equilibrium will be equal to 1 and the, op, the cost, Nash equilibrium cost is going to be summation, no, not summation, 1 multiplied by 1 plus 0 multiplied by 1, so that gives me 1. Okay, so if everyone is selfish and does what is best for themselves, the overall cost for the entire society has increased. In comparison, when there was a god which was directing the traffic, then the cost is 3 over 4. Yeah. So, every individual who is standing here would look at this particular link and say that I am going to incur a cost of x1, right? which is always going to be less than equal to x2, not, it will be less than equal to this one, that is the cost of going through this link. So for you, it is better to take this link all the time, or this path all the time, right? So that's what, so it's a weakly dominant strategy for everyone in the network, okay? Yes, sir. I think the value is to you can think of x1 as the fraction of players who are deciding to go take one route and the fraction of players deciding to take the other route okay but since they are non-atomic each individual doesn't affect the cost on each of the links it's the aggregate traffic that affects the cost of the link okay and of course, in this case, I have picked an identity cost, but you can have x raised to p or something, you know, you can pick whatever cost you want to pick along that route. So, so this is uh, what we have. So selfish uh, behavior uh, doesn't seem to be doing good in this case. But how do we know what is, uh, so how do we, how do we come up with a performance metric for Nash equilibrium? So the idea is to use what is known as price of anarchy. Okay, this is a more general concept, but it has been studied extensively for the case of uh, routing or game over network. So what is price of anarchy? POA is the ratio of total 
cost at worst total cost at Nash equilibrium over the optimal cost okay so for this particular pigo network the price of anarchy is 1 over 3 over 4 4 over 3 price of anarchy will always be greater than or equal to 1 so if price of anarchy is close to 1 you are getting so the Nash equilibrium performance is almost very close to the optimal cost so that's the best case scenario but in general price of anarchy is going to be strictly greater than 1 and in this case it's 4 over 3 so that's in some sense that is capturing the loss due to strategic behavior okay and the reason why it's called anarchy is because everyone is free to make their own choices okay there's no central authority that's giving instruction to every individual okay any question about that <coughs> so this equilibrium Nash equilibrium in the context of these networks is also known as wardrop equili equilibrium so this is also called wardrop equilibrium and wardrop studied this problem is in 1952 so it, it was somewhere around the same time as Nash um, Nash uh, wrote his paper about Nash equilibrium in 51 so it was pretty much around the same time <coughs> okay so we can study this problem in a more general setting uh, for an arbitrary graph with arbitrary source destination pairs and different paths over the network so let's do that So I have a, a directed graph so n is the set of nodes e is the set of set of edges okay and P is the set of paths from sources to destination so let me make a network here So it's a directed graph, so this is my source 1, source 2, destination 2, destination 1 and I have to write down the cost along each of these directed edges. So this is 0, 0, 1, 0, x plus 1, 0, 3x okay and some rate r1 and some rate r2 that's entering this uh, graph so if i want to go from source 1 to destination 1 i can take this path this this path or I can also take this path right same thing for source in 2 I can each person can take this path 
or it can take this path. Okay, so there are two, there are four possible paths. So this P will have four paths, and n here would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So n has so there are six nodes, and the number of edges uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven edges total in this particular directed graph. Okay, and since this is a directed graph, you will see that the arrow goes only in one direction. Okay, there's no bidirectional arrows here. Okay, so I'm going to define something. So XP is the flow along path P in P, and XE is the flow along edge E in E. And there is an easy relationship between XP and XE, which is XE equals to summation over P in P such that E belongs to P and you have x of p. So each path actually, p will be e1 comma e2 comma e3, right? So I go along e1 first, then I go along e2, then I go along e3, and I've reached the destination. Okay, it might look something. So a path is a collection of edges and you are going to go through those edges in a sequential fashion. So everyone understands this, okay? And so you have a loss function or latency, latency in link E, or rather I should just write edge, L E, which is a function of x e. Okay. So what is the total latency? Latency of all individuals and it's a summation of Xe, Le, Xe, E in capital E. So that's the total latency, but you can also write it as summation of XP and CP, P in P, right? And where CP is defined as summation of L E X E. In P. Okay, so two different paths can go through the same same edge, and therefore they will add up, and the loss will increase uh, accordingly. So typically, of course, we would assume that the latency increases as Xe increases. Okay. So, so we will assume that Le, assume Le is non-decreasing and we can also assume Le to be a con convex function or strictly increasing. Okay, so you can assume Le is strictly increasing or you can also assume Le to be a convex function which is also increasing. Okay, so you can make whatever assumptions 
make sense in your application. Actually, it would be good to give you some examples of LE. Uh, note that each of these XEs are always greater than 0, OK? So LE of X could be AX plus B. It could be any other polynomial, summation, AI, XI raised to N. No, summation of AN, X raised to N n equals 0 to, I don't know, p. p is already used. OK, I need some other number, whatever, 5. OK, the other Le could be 1 over ue minus x if x is less than ue and infinity if x is greater than equal to U E. Okay, so this is a very specific class of uh, class of uh, loss fu latency function, which essentially says that if your x is small, your latency is almost constant, but as x increases, your latency increases, and as you approach the capacity, so this is some sort of capacity on the network. So as you approach the capacity, the latency increases all the way to infinity. Okay, so. Uh, it's quite useful in communication network, okay? Because uh, if you're sending low number of packets, it's fine. But as you increase the number of packets, the packet dropouts and other things, the uh, delay will increase accordingly. So that's useful from a communications perspective. Uh, those of you who might have heard of MM1Q, uh, this is an average delay in an MM1Q with uh, some sort of capacity constraint. Okay. So this is the overall problem formulation. So what what do we want to find out? So we want to find out two things. One is when is a solution socially optimal, and the other thing is when is it. Uh, uh, and, and so what's how do you characterize the Nash equilibrium? So let's define what a Nash equilibrium is in this game. Question? No. So Nash equilibrium, or uh, actually I should write it as Wardrop equilibrium, but it's the same as Nash equilibrium. So the Wardrop equilibrium is for every p p, there does not exist a p prime in p such that summation of E in P L E X E is strictly less than summation of E in P prime L E X E or yeah. Okay, so so what it says is the path will be an equilibrium. So P is an equilibrium if there is no other path that will give you a better lat latency, strictly better latency. Okay, you know I feel that there is something wrong with this expression. Yeah, but this is a inequality in the wrong direction, right? P, so for every, there does not exist any P prime that can give you a lower latency. So I think the inequality should be in the other direction. Right, does that make sense? Right, so in along P prime, your latency is going to be 
lower. Yeah, so this is a wall drop equilibrium. And of course, this is an implicit assumption here that P and P prime are the same, are connecting the same source and destination pairs. Okay. So what's the socially optimal solution? I want to minimize summation of xe, le, xe, e in capital E, and I want to minimize over all xp. What paths should uh, the traffic take such that summation of xp, p such that E is in P should be equal to XE for every E in edge. And then, of course, XE has to be greater than or equal to 0. Rather, XP has to be greater than or equal to 0 for all P. Okay? So, of course, if you know, Xe's are all decision variables as well, but because of the equality constraint, you can really replace Xe everywhere with this horrible looking expression. And you will have a optimization problem purely in terms of Xp's. Uh, one thing to note here is that you can have multiple flow over the edges. So, sorry, you will have the same flow over the edges, but you will have different path configurations. Okay, so that's very much possible. So. So that's the socially optimal optimization problem, gives you the best result. What about wall drop equilibrium? Okay, wall drop, in wall drop equilibrium, everyone is making a strategic choice. We'll take a set, we'll, every individual who enters the system will take a path where the total latency is going to be minimized. So it's very similar to what you would do normally on a Google map, right? You will take the path that takes you to your destination as soon as possible. So the theorem is X wall drop equilibrium is wall drop equilibrium if and only if x w e equals to argmin of x p p in p summation e in e integral 0 to x e l e z d z subject to star and this is my star Okay, so at this particular, uh, if you find out the argmin of this particular uh, objective function, subject to those constraints, the two constraints that are written there, uh, what you get is a wall drop equilibrium. So as you can see, this is quite uncharacteristic of a game result. Yeah. As 
This is small p. Small p. This is a path. There are multiple paths, yeah. So, so there is no, there is no other path that strictly improves your total latency at equilibrium. Yes. So this is, so this is the edge in the path P, sum of all the latency. But I mean, there are more than one path. Right. So, so you are computing the latency along a specific path, not along two different paths. So this is this is the latency along path P. This is the latency along path P prime. But I mean, if, if, if there are like x one goes from source to destination, we we cannot split s one into two paths. No, we cannot. Yeah, it has to go through a single specific path. Okay, that's why it's a non-atomic. Uh, it's a non-atomic assumption. So each individual doesn't really affect the total latency. Um, the the case you are talking about uh, sounds more like a network with an atomic user. So airlines are something like that. Okay, so airlines can decide that you know I'll make Columbus a hub, and so every flight will come into Columbus and every flight will go out of Columbus. Okay, uh, although Columbus is not really a hub, uh, <laughs> that's a bad thing. But uh, anyways. So this is the characterization of Wardrop equilibrium. So what I was saying is this is quite uncharacteristic of a game that a solution or a Nash equilibrium of a game would be some sort of optimization of a very nice looking objective function. Okay, typically games are the Nash equilibrium uh, is supposed to be a fixed point of various set of inequalities, um, but that's not the case here. It's just an argmin. Well, it is the case here, but it turns out to be equivalent to an argmin problem. And in fact, the the theory is that if Le is increasing, then there exists a unique Nash equilibrium. And if you think about a road network, LE is not really increasing. You know, it stays flat for some time, and then when the traffic builds up, the delay increases. Okay, but you can, yeah. Uh, what does this objective function which is on? And uh, I don't see XP inside the objective function. It's Which X? XE. Oh, but your argument is over XP. Yes, so then XP is the summation of xp should be equal to xe and xp should be greater than or equal to 0 so i have written here subject to star okay that's those two constraints sorry uh, you know this is a mathematical result there's nothing uh, i don't think there is any interpretation of what this summation would mean uh, because if you think about well Let's let's try to think about what this integration means. So as I increase the, as I increase from zero to x e, which is the full capacity, uh, not the full capacity, but zero to x e, which is the equilibrium flow over that edge e, uh, I'm integrating the latency. Okay, so let's say my l e of x, and this is my x. It looks something like this. So I'm looking at the area under this curve. I mean, the area under the curve doesn't really mean much, right? But what is the latency? Well, latency is xe multiplied by le, and you do the summation. But somehow, at equilibrium, you're doing the summation. That's fine, same as there. But instead of multiplying le by xe, you're actually taking the area under the curve all the way up to xe. Okay, so I don't know what's the physical significance of this is. Yeah. Just turns out to be, maybe it's a mathematical coincidence or something. Yeah. Okay. But what, what you get out of this particular result is as follows. 
an alternate characterization of Wardrop equilibrium, which is by, so let's take the Lagrange relaxation of that particular problem. It turns out to be a convex problem because Le is going to be no positive and non-decreasing and so on. So it's a convex function with convex constraints. So it's overall a convex problem. So first order necessary condition is sufficient. So let's look at the Lagrangian with respect to xp and then what else? Lambda and then mu p which is equal to summation of E in E integral of 0 to summation of xp E in P L E L E Z D Z plus minus summation Okay, so this is the total flow constraint, uh, which is uh, not really required, but usually people tend to normalize everything. Well, yeah, so, so let's put this constraint, which is summation of xp equals 1. Okay, so that's this constraint. And then I take the derivative with respect to xp at the optimal point. Remember, this is arg min. So I'm going to take the derivative at the optimal point of the arg min. What do I get? I get summation e in p l e x e star. minus mu p minus is equal to 0. Okay? So what that would mean is summation E in P summation E L E E in P X P star is equal to mu P star plus lambda star. Okay, so mu P is the Lagrange multiplier corresponding to the inequality constraint X P greater than or equal to zero and lambda star is the Lagrange multiplier corresponding to this normalizing the total traffic flow constraint, summation of xp equals 1. So what happens when xp star is greater than 0? So if xp star is greater than 0, then mu star p is equal to 0. Right, all of you remember this, right, the KKD condition. So which means that if xp star is greater than 0, then the summation of Le, which is the total latency along path P, so what is this? This is total latency along path P <clears throat> what is that equal to uh, lambda star right 
Yeah, so that's equal to lambda star if xp star is greater than 0. You know, I think I should also put a summation over all p because the latency depends on latency depends on the total uh, flow through that link. <coughs> okay. So what we get is xp star greater than 0 implies Le Xe star E in P equals to lambda star equals to constant. So the total latency along all possible paths is going to be constant in the network. Okay, at the, when everyone is selfish, at the wall drop equilibrium. So this is alternate characterization. of wall drop equilibrium, which is if P, P prime is in the path with XP, wall drop equilibrium and X, P prime at wall drop equilibrium, both of them are strictly positive, then summation E in P L E X E is going to be equal to summation of E in P prime L E X E. No matter which source destination pair you choose, okay, it doesn't matter. You're going to have the same cost what's uh, along all possible source destination pairs. Okay, so that's one part of the story. Okay, you are in a network, if people are selfish, then at equilibrium, everyone's total latency is going to be a constant. Okay, and what is that constant? Well, that constant corresponds to the Lagrange multiplier corresponding to this constraint. Okay, so you can think of it as some sort of sensitivity with respect to this constraint, okay? Because Lagrange multiplier is sensitivity of the optimal cost with respect to whatever constraint you are, you are talking about. Now, <clears throat> let's say you have this huge network that you have created and you have traffic and everyone is selfish. Uh, things are going on, I mean, things are getting difficult. So you come up with a new idea that let's create another link between two points, okay, and what you know from your theory of optimization is guess what, if you add a new link, your social cost is always going to reduce, okay, assuming everyone is going to act in the best interest of the society and not in their own best interest, okay, so that comes from the theory of optimization. So let's think about it from that perspective. <coughs> So I have this uh, network, this is the source, this is the destination. Okay, there are, let's say there is a, I don't know, there is a river in between the source and destination pair and you have two highways. So it's, the cost is X, so identity cost this is 1, this is 1, and this is x. Okay, so this is how the latency looks like. Latency is constant along this edge and this edge, and latency is identity along this edge and this edge. 
And so you came up with this idea that, you know what, I want to ease the traffic flow. I'm going to build a bridge along these two nodes. So that way, some of the traffics can get rerouted and overall social cost is going to reduce. And because it's a small bridge, the total cost is zero. Okay? It's almost like they are going through a flu network. For those of you who don't understand flu network, probably you are too old or too young. It's there in Harry Potter, by the way. Uh, okay. So the cost is zero. So what's going to happen at Nash equilibrium? So let's look at the social cost when there was no there was no such link, and then we'll look at what happens uh, when there is indeed such a link. Okay. So socially optimal cost without additional link. So you have x square plus 1 plus x square plus 1 and then you want to minimize such that 2x, well, sorry, x1 square and x2 square, and then you want to minimize such that x1 plus x2 is equal to 1. So what's the optimal cost? This should be x1, this should be x2. So what's the optimal cost? Well, due to the symmetry, the optimal result is going to be uh, 1 over 2 and x2 star equals 1 over 2. Okay, and the optimal cost one over four plus one over two, so three over four plus three over four equals three over two. Okay. It turns out that if we do not have any link, then people will be oblivious on going around this route or this route, and so the equilibrium will be one half and one half. So the socially optimal cost will be also the equilibrium cost. Now, let's say you put this link. So that gives an additional option to players at the source to take this route. Okay? And so what's the total cost? What's the cost along the new route. It's actually x1 plus x2, right? Which is always going to be less than equal to 1 plus x1 and it's also going to be less than equal to 1 plus x2. So taking this path is the optimal thing to do. Okay, so because that's the that's a dominant. So this is the dominant. So new path, new path is a weekly weekly dominant. strategy, which means that the cost, which means that all traffic, all traffic will go through new path, which means total cost at equilibrium is going to be 1 plus 1 equals 2. Okay, so by giving options to players, you've actually increased the total social cost. And this is known as Bray's paradox. Oh, 
I deleted this. Okay, so this is Bray's paradox. Which says that if you add a link without thinking about the consequences that selfish uh, players in the game are going to do, if you don't take those consequences into account, you might actually increase the total social cost. And you might think that this is a mathematical construct, but uh, I've read papers where people have surveyed traffic patterns in different cities around the world and they have seen that if they had to close a road or a section of the road or a lane on a highway due to construction work, they realize that the overall traffic has improved, the traffic condition in the city has improved because everyone is being selfish and because of that the overall delay or congestion has actually reduced. Now, I don't know whether they opened the road after the construction was complete or not. They might have as well destroyed that road because it leads to worst social cost. But, uh, but that wasn't part of the paper, so I don't know whether uh, what happened after they constructed or the construction was over. But this has been observed in cities across the world. So this is not, uh, not completely uh, a mathematical thing to study. Uh, of course, what would be good to know is an algorithm which you can run on a city-wide network and figure out which roads to block at which points of the day so as to ease the traffic flow, especially around this time, 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. So that's a good thing to study, but I don't know if it has been done or not or how difficult that problem is. I haven't done a lot of research in this. Okay. Any question about that? Okay, so this, uh, uh, there is nothing much else to study here except that now the price of anarchy has actually increased because of this new link. So the new old POA equals to one, new price of anarchy is equal to what? Two over three over two. So that's 4 over 3. So you've increased the price of anarchy by adding this new road. So that's probably the only conclusion I can make here. Okay. The third thing I want to talk about is over, over provision network. And the idea is to have, so suppose each of these link has some capacity, okay, especially in communication network, you will have one link that is 100 gigabit, the other link that might be one terabit and so on, okay. And so you as a person who's designing this network or let's say you work in AT&T or some such big com company and you have to decide whether we should increase the capacity of this link or not, okay. So what would you think you should do? So the, the idea is you want to increase the capacity for sure, uh, but, but by how much? So if you increase it to 100 giga, gigabits per second, that's going to be less costly. If you increase it to 1,000 gigabits per second, it's going to be much more costly. So what's the right, uh, right capacity to choose? So this might, be, uh, this might come to your rescue. So in those kind of network, especially where Le of Xe is given by 1 over Ue minus Xe, Xe less than Ue and infinity, Xe greater than Ue, so it looks something like
Okay, so it remains constant or very slowly increasing in the beginning and then suddenly jumps as you reach closer to the capacity U E. So the over so the over provision network network means that X E is roughly less than equal to 1 minus beta into U E. Okay? So the traffic that you will route through the through that particular network or through that particular edge is going to be 1 minus beta uh, multiplied by U E. U E is the total capacity. Okay? So if you pick U E according to this fashion, then your price of anarchy is bounded away from 1 over 2, 1 plus square root 1 over beta. Okay, so because of this, you might think that well, it's 1 over beta, so it's quite high, but actually, if you let's say your beta was 0 0.1, so you are just over provisioning by 10 percent, 1 over 0 0.1 is 10, square root of 10 is 3 and 3 over 2 is 1.5. So you're not really increasing the price of anarchy by a huge margin. Okay, so just slightly over provisioning is good enough. So pick a small value of beta that's good enough for the overall network, uh, overall traffic in the network. Okay, so the price of anarchy will be not too high by slightly over provisioning it. So, and this is true, well, of course it's true under this assumption when your loss function looks something like this. But you can think about it in terms of traffic, in terms of communication network, and so on, where if you expect the traffic to be a certain number of cars per minute, you just should make the highway that can accommodate slightly more than what you expect the traffic to be. Okay, Not more. You don't have to overdo the road building stuff. Okay, any question? Yes. So here, are they looking at making a new mesh capacity or just like looking to not be as much capacity? Uh, sorry, what's your question? In this case? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So are they looking at increasing the mesh capacity or just limiting the amount of traffic so that? No, they are looking at increasing the maximum capacity but assuming that all the players are going to be selfish at from source to destination. Okay. So you know what, one thing that I don't know is how routers work, how do they pick which path to take. Uh, if I want to look at my Gmail account, I don't understand how the university router routes the traffic and so on. Maybe you would know. I don't. <laughs> so, uh, so I don't know whether there is any selfish uh, decision making in built on in the router's no, protocol. It's based no? on a shortest path first algorithm, it's pretty static. Oh, I see, okay. Okay, so it's not selfish at all. What if what if I am a Verizon user and I go to an AT&T network and I start using my cell phone? That's like sharing agreements. And okay. You know, but some, in some, okay. you have some more advanced routing in like wireless or point to point. Okay. Or sensor networks things like that. Okay. And then this stuff comes in. Okay. So one thing, of course, you should notice uh, when I was talking about Brace Paradox, adding the new link does not increase the total social cost. I mean, the social cost should improve, but it does improve, it does increase the price of anarchy. Uh, the next topic is congestion games. Okay? And in these games, we are talking about atomic users atomic players. So you have n players and you have m resources 
and each player decides on SI so player I player I decides SI which is a subset of M so which resources should player I use okay so it's a subset of MI so B J K is the benefit to benefit of using resource J if K users are using it. Okay, and so the utility function of agent I S I S minus I is the summation j in s i c j or rather b j of k j which is a function of s so what is k j of s let me write that's equal to number of users using resource J okay so you can also think of it in a graphical term and of course the number of users reusing resource J depends on what the strategy of each of the users are Okay, so let's say you have a network and uh, each of these are resources, so M1, M2, M3, M4, M5 and the players, N players are going to decide which of the resources they want to use. Okay, and if more players are using the same resource then the benefit reduces uh, and if less number of players are using the same resource the benefit increases so uh, this is for instance this is modeling the aircraft industry so Delta American Airlines Southwest all of them have hubs so you can think of think of the hubs as resources m1 m4 m5 m1 and m3 so these are the resources these are the hubs and each airline is going to use one of these hubs so the question is uh, which hubs which so if I'm I'm one airline if I'm a new airline which should be which city should be my hub which city should I use as my hub okay um, if everyone goes to a single place and makes that their hub then the congestion within that uh, airspace is going to increase and the benefit will reduce drastically for every user in that network okay so that's why it's called congestion game okay if everyone uses the same resource it's going to re it's going to increase congestion and thereby reduce the benefit to everyone so it turns out the theorem is congestion game is a potential game and the potential function p of s is going to be summation j in union of s i i in n summation k 
equals 1 to kj s cjk okay so that's the potential function so those of you who have done the assignment uh, would probably remember that uh, if you have a potential game, fictitious property holds, fictitious play property holds, so the players can play fictitious play and converge to the Nash equilibrium. Okay, in congestion game, uh, sorry, in potential game. So, so in some sense, you know, you you have this, you have this thought. Well, fictitious play works in works in uh, um, zero sum games. So, are there non-zero sum games where? fictitious play would work. Well, this is an example of a non-zero sum game where fictitious play would converse to a Nash equilibrium of the, of the system. Okay. Uh, you can of course study the price of anarchy and other things uh, and I don't have the results for price of anarchy here, but uh, you can study those, those issues and figure out what the price of anarchy of congestion games look like. Now, I haven't seen congestion game in in the electrical engineering type topics, but I'm sure there would be papers somewhere studying topics like this for EE type applications. What's CJ? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, BJ. Yeah, the total benefit. Okay, any question? Yeah. NQP and all those protocols, they have something called condition control. Okay. Congestion control. I think it's uh, it's more of an optimization. Well, uh, is it based on some game theoretic notion or is it based on some optimization ideas? Do you know, Joe? TCP? Congestion control in TCP? Uh, it's, no? It's based on uh, like some flavors of it on primal level optimization. Yeah. Primal dual optimization. So it has no game theoretic flavor. Maybe some papers, but not the mainstream. Okay, not the mainstream, okay. Uh, maybe some of the more recent results in software defined networking might start start looking at that. Have you looked at software defined networking? Yeah, I don't, I don't okay. know. Maybe something more recent where you do allow like so, database routing. So when do you have like a resource that is shared among various users? Wireless channels, yeah, I think, uh, what is that radio, what is, soft, not software defined radio, like you use the, you share the same channel for transmitting information, so multiple users who are all um, selfish, they all want to send information through the same communication channel, not the same, but like there are M communication channels, N players, and they want to somehow figure out which channel to use to send that information across. And of course, if more people start sharing information on the same channel, then it's going to lead to packet drops uh, because it's going to lead to interference, which will lead to packet drops. So, so I don't know whether uh, somebody has used this theory of congestion game to figure out what the equilibrium should look like for the players. I have seen multi-arm bandit papers for those class of problems, but not fictitious play or congestion game type of framework. Okay, so these are the topics I wanted to cover in today's class. So next class onwards, we'll talk about cooperative game theory, which talks about when would a group of selfish people form a coalition uh, in a uh, in order to improve their own individual payoff, okay? So why political parties are formed, or why any party is formed, or why did this class, why were we able to collect so many people in this class and have a set of lectures on game theory? So we'll talk about uh, those issues. That is studied under cooperative game theory. And the notion of cooperative game theory will become very important, I believe, in the future when we have intelligent transportation network because in that case we'll have multiple modes of transportation trying to
trying to share their resources together so as to improve the benefit to the society. And of course, if somebody improves the benefit to the society, they get to earn a lot of money, right? So, uh, so I think it's going to become very, very important in the future. But at this point of time, cooperative game theory has very little, has received very little attention in the engineering literature. It's more restricted to social sciences and, uh, and economics. So we'll study that in the next class. Uh, on Tuesday, we don't have any class. So our next class is going to be Thursday next week. Thank you. Thank you.